Hello! In this video, I will show you how to control an electric motor using Raspberry Pi and HBridge. Also, we will create a simple mobile application that will connect to a Raspberry Pi and actually control this motor. Let's start with a theory about electric motors and how do they work. Let's go through electric motor basics and HBridge. When the current is applied to a motor, it starts to rotate. If we reverse the direction of the current, the motor will rotate in the opposite direction. It's very straightforward. To switch the direction of the current, we use an H-bridge. Simply speaking, it's four electrical switchers or transistors that can change the direction of current flow through the motor by turning on diagonal switchers. This pair will enable rotation in counterclockwise direction. And the opposite switchers will rotate in a clockwise direction. To control speed of the motor, we can use pulse width modulation. Let's look at this example to understand what pulse width modulation is. When we don't have the current, the motor is static. Nothing happens, nothing rotates. When we send tiny pulses of current for a short time, we make the motor rotate. When there is no current, the motor rotates by inertia. We can see that the voltage is applied to the motor only 25% of the time. And in this case, we will have only 25% of power. Next, we increase pulse length and reduce gaps when we don't have the current. Now we have identical period when the voltage is applied and gaps when it doesn't. The motor is pushed half of the time, so that the power will be equal to 50%. Going further, we can apply voltage during 75% of the time. The power will increase accordingly. And finally, when the current is flowing constantly, we have 100% of the power. Let's zoom out and review it together. We can see that power or speed is controlled by current impulses. We apply the same voltage, but for a different amount of time. The longer the impulses, the more speed and power the motor will reach. No current, no power. When pulse length is 25% of a period, we have 25% of the power. We have half the power when the gaps are equal to the current flow periods. When pulse length is 75% of a period, we have 75% of the power. And finally, full power when the current is constant. Combining the edge bridge with the pulse width modulation allows us to control the electric motor speed and rotation direction. And this tiny board can do both. You can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review the connection schema. We have a 12 volts battery and we connect the edge bridge module to it. We need to use power plus and power minus slots. Next, we connect a motor to the motor slots. In this case, polarity doesn't matter. And finally, we connect tiny pins of the model to Raspberry Pi. Ground to ground. Input one of the edge bridge to the GPO13 and input 2 to the GPO12. We are using these pins because they support hardware pulse width modulation. It has more precise output and works better than software PWM. And that's how it looks like in real life. The hardware is ready and it's time to review the software. We have a phone that is connected to a Wi-Fi router and a Raspberry Pi on the same network with a socket server on a board. We will establish a TCP connection to the WebSocket server and send a command that contains a JSON object. I'm sending Y from minus 100 to 100 to determine the rotation speed and direction. Minus 100 means full speed in the counterclockwise direction. When Raspberry Pi receives a command, it sends a pulse width modulation signal to input one of the edge bridge. The edge bridge powers the motor and it rotates. When the pawn sends a command with a positive 100 value, the Raspberry Pi will stop sending any current to input one and start sending it to input two. And motor will rotate in clockwise direction. 
I'm using a Raspberry Pi 5 and 64-bit Debian OS. I have a predefined Wi-Fi configuration, so it will connect automatically to the local network. Now it's time to eject the SD card and power on the device. I'm connecting to Raspberry Pi. I know my IP address and credential. Next, I will need to clone the repository. You can find a link to it in the description of the video below. Copying the HTTP link, use the git clone command to download the repository. Next, we are going deeper into the Raspberry folder of the repository and running install.sh script. Later, I will explain what it does. Also, it will ask if we want to proceed and obviously we won't. Speed up again. In the end, the Raspberry will reboot itself. And now I will try to reconnect to the board. Be patient, it takes some time to finish the update process so you can see a few timeouts here. Next, I go to the same folder and run the python websockets.py command. The command printed that it operates with both GPO and that it creates a WebSocket server to a port 8765. The Raspberry Pi is ready and waiting for the connection. Let's open a second terminal window and clone the repository on the local machine with the same git clone command. It's time to open Visual Studio Code and review what we just launched on the Raspberry Pi. Install.sh script will do the following. First, it will check and install Git and Python. They should be pre-installed on the system, but it's better to recheck. Second, it will install two important Python libraries, Hardware Pulse with Modulation and WebSocket Server. Next, we need to enable a Pulse with Modulation on pins 12 and 13. So we add this line to this file. Next, we have an ugly hack. In the current version of Debian OS, hardware pulse with modulation doesn't work and we need to update the kernel. So if a kernel version is 6.6.20, we do force update of the Linux kernel. Last but not least, reboot the Raspberry Pi. Next file is websocket.py. At the top of it, we have some constants like ping intervals, IP and port. Then we have the main method that runs a WebSocket server on the defined port. If a phone or a computer connects to the Raspberry Pi, we will receive a WebSocket using a handler method. Next, we are starting pings to keep this connection alive. Then we have an infinite loop that reads messages from the WebSocket server and send to motor handler. The next file is the motor handler class. It has two defined fields, motor forward and motor backward. For each of them, we assigned a channel or a pin 12 and 13 accordingly. We init both pins. Then we set a value to one of the pins and zero to another. It's important not to send a PWM signal to both pins simultaneously. The motor can't rotate in both directions at the same time. Last but not least, PWM control file. In the init method, we start with a zero value. In the set method, we guarantee that the value will be from zero to 100 and we change the duty cycle of the pin. It will increase or decrease gaps in pulse width modulation and adjust the speed of the motor. That's it for the Raspberry Pi code. It's time to move on to the cross-platform mobile application. Let's open Android Studio. It's important to open a mobile folder in the studio. It has a Flutter project inside. This project can be built for iOS and Android and web. I will show you an Android example. All the magic happens in the lib folder. I have main.dart file that is an entry point. And I have websocket client file that connects to the Raspberry Pi and sends command. 
Here I have hard-coded IP address of the Pi server. In my case, I have an IP that ends on 73 and I need to put it in that file. Last but not least, a slider screen. It's a file with the UI. Now it's time to build the project. Don't forget to connect the phone to the laptop and wait a bit for installation. Cool, let's zoom in and see it in practice. When we change slider on the phone, it sends WebSocket messages to the Raspberry Pi. We can see that GPO13 is receiving positive values in a terminal window. And the motor starts to rotate. Now let's test the other direction. And now GPO12 is receiving positive values. That's it. We can control this motor simply by dragging a slider. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.